welcome back to our channel. We're in the studio today and we are doing a little tutorial on how to make a boutonniere with some flowers that we had in the cooler and also with some foraged items that I just picked outside. So what do we have today on the table? Some heuchera, otherwise known as coral bells. I've got these two little baby leaves that I think are gonna be really cute with what we have. We have some mint for those of you that like to have a little fragrance. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> so then I picked some vinca from the side garden. I kind of prefer this piece because it's a little stiffer and the variegation I think is a little nicer. We also have some butterfly ranunculus and these gorgeous little brown lisianthus. So I kind of just wanted to have a variety to choose from. We're definitely not gonna use all of these, but we're gonna mix and match and see what actually looks the best. I also snipped off a piece of Japanese lilac, which I love and is also very fragrant. And of course you can't go wrong with lavender. We may not use the flower, but I love using the foliage. It's very fragrant. You can always cut the flower out. The supplies that you're going to be needing are snips, floral adhesive. We have this nice double-sided tape, which I love for boutonnieres because it sticks to itself. I've got two different size wire. I have a thinner gauged wire and then a little bit thicker gauged wire because we're probably gonna have to wire the butterfly ranunculus because when you're making a boutonniere, you don't, there are some flowers such as this one that their nature is to droop, especially after a hot, long, couple of hours getting pictures taken. So you need to think about that as well too when you're creating a boutonniere is what's a good flower and foliage that will hold up to the elements. Nice pair of ribbon scissors and then this gorgeous ribbon from the Lesser Bear. If you're looking to make a boutonniere and you need some supplies, I will have a link to my storefront that you can just click on and all the supplies that you need to make your boutonniere will be right there. Let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna start with is wiring these ranunculus. And right now they look fine. Like you think, all right, those guys are gonna be great. But it's hard to tell what the day will bring. So I'm gonna use my thicker gauged wire, cut it in half, do a little loop-de-doo. I'm just sticking that in there. So then you're going to take your double-sided tape without breaking the ranunculus, twist that along. What I'm going to do is cut, because I like to have a little bit of this exposed. Like I do with any arrangement is I start with the foliage because that kind of sets the backdrop for the flower. So you kind of want different layers, different textures, different smell. You want to strip off at least half of the foliage as you're doing this. And I'm using a piece of vinca and I'm layering it. So I have a shorter piece, a longer piece. The shorter piece obviously will be in the front. And then I'm putting that little piece of mint kind of in the back like this. I think I might add just a couple sprigs of the lavender just because it smells good. I really think that thinking about fragrance when you're designing for a wedding is very important because people's sensory experience and their ability to return to a memory via smell is very strong. Doing a lot of layering. I'm gonna add a couple pieces of this coral bells and I put one facing up and one down. You don't want them both side by side. Again, you want this to be a little bit asymmetrical and interesting. So next I'm gonna see how this Japanese lilac looks. I really like it. We'll see if it has an impact. Actually, that might be something I add towards the end. And it might be too frilly for my liking. What I like about these coral bell leaves is that they pick up on the tone in the center of the, the butterfly ranunculus. You can always shift around a little bit too. If you need to pull, pull some stuff out. I'm thinking I'm probably gonna go ahead and add one of these too. I just wanna show you another option. I love the brown Lizzie. I have to keep that in there. But here's another Lizzie that could be gorgeous placed in there. And if you didn't wanna do one that was too terribly different, you could just add another brown Lizzie for a really cute look. I think I really enjoyed this one though. Not happy with the way that guy's turned. And I'm gonna slip this, this one in. So it's starting to look like something. If you want, you can add a couple little buds over here just for you know a little extra texture. It's good to have these pre-prepped, have all your foliage 
stripped down and taken off before you get started on this. I really like that. That just adds a little peak of texture. And now we're going to wrap this. And I don't go all the way down because again, I like to have some of my stems exposed Then you just rip it. And sometimes when you do that, it might lose a little bit of its shape. You can just fluff it out a little bit and then cut your stems even. And then all we have to do is rip it. Now we're going to apply this gorgeous ribbon. This one is a little bit crinkly. If you're not going for the crinkly look, make sure you have on hand a hair straightener. Plug it in, get it heated up. One little swoop does the trick. So we've got our beautiful boutonniere. We're going to tie it off with this gorgeous hand dyed silk ribbon. So I'm gonna take this, put it at the end and kind of hold on to that and then Catch, I'm catching that little piece on itself and wrapping it around. So you're just wrapping it kind of like you did with the tape, coming up and joining back up with the front. I'm gonna cut that off and tie it, tie it up. And I like to do a double knot. And there we go. Some people really like the fishtails. So that is an option where you fold it in half, cut it like that. It's kind of sweet. Another option is just cutting it on the bias. You don't want to cut this one this direction if this one's being cut that direction. So I, we keep the stems long because I'm going to show you how we uh, keep these nice and watered until the day of. So I just filled up this low dish of water and I'm using one of these frogs, these antique frogs. We have a little collection of them. They are awesome for keeping boutonnieres well hydrated. So make sure there's enough water in there. Um, and then you can stick the boutonniere directly down in there and it stays upright and it's getting water. Now, the only thing I would recommend is if you're doing an event, we like to ribbon very last minute. So, you know, the night before the event or the morning of, because we just don't wanna get that, get a bunch of water all over the ribbon. But this is great for storing them overnight and then you just put them in the cooler or refrigerator and you should be good to go. Uh, something else that these really like too, actually, would be there's a product called Crowning Glory and we or Finishing Touch, and we just spray a little bit of that on here and it helps preserve and keep everything well hydrated. We always send off our boutonnieres with two pins and I just stick them in the side, stick it right in the side. Two, because you just never know. You might need an extra one, so. Two pins on the side, we package it with some tissue paper that coordinates with the boutonniere and put it into a cute little box and label it and that's how we deliver our boutonnieres. After these have hydrated overnight and before you put them into the box and package them as they're on their way to the venue, I like to cut the bottom off, give it a fresh cut so you don't have a, a bunch of stems hanging down underneath. So. It looks large, but I am a smaller person. When you get this on a six foot dude, trust me, it's gonna be fine. <laughs> when you are creating your boutonnieres, just try to think about the fact that you're creating a mini bouquet, a mini one-sided bouquet. That's what you're creating, and that's what we have created today. Thanks so much for watching today as we created a DIY boutonniere in the studio. I wish you the best of luck in putting together your boutonnieres and please subscribe to our channel for more tutorials. And if you need any of the products that we mentioned, check the link in the description. Bye.